A grower group in WA's southern grain belt is investigating ways to improve transitions between crop and pasture phases to lift whole farm productivity. Muchus Gracias group members are based in medium and high rainfall zones around Arthur River and Wagen, where cropping areas have been steadily increasing in recent years. A series of research trials in the area are assessing tactics for better integrating pastures into cropping rotations, reducing weeds and improving pastures coming out of a cropping phase, and pushing pasture productivity. Wage and growers Brian and Jane Kilpatrick have a mix of long and short term pastures on 35% of their property and they crop the remainder. They are using a combination of improved pasture paddocks early in the year, deferred grazing onto long term pasture paddocks and some crop grazing to set up paddocks for their lambing period. Uh, the trial was quite um, in interesting because we really uh, concentrated on uh, the, the rotation between cropping and grazing uh, and from grazing back into the cropping pro process. So that was, it's always been a, the point that we've really wanted to concentrate on and, and get right. Um, so that's why we sort of got on board and, and, and got involved. Pretty standard trial where, where we uh, sowed into a, a dry pasture, oats um, and, a, and some clover um, with a bit of fertiliser and uh, to try and produce a bit of density into the, into the pasture and to germinate some of the ryegrass that's been uh, hanging around for a couple of years. Uh, we sowed it on the 24th of July and uh, we've had an intensive grey since. We had some early broadleaf uh, issues, um, so we've we sprayed and grazed them out and we've, that's had a good effect. Um, and we've applied a bit of nitrogen since and that uh, has seen a, quite a good growth since. The work on the Kilpatrick's property is one of a series of demonstration trial sites set up by Plan Farm consultant Paul Omaday and Department of Agriculture and Food WA researchers through the GRDC funded Grain and Graze 3 project. Brian says that the first year's trials revealed a definite cultivation effect on weed numbers and growth. Yeah, the cultivation effect has certainly had an impact on the weeds. The, uh, just the tickling up and, and the, uh, has certainly promoted a bit of uh, growth in the weeds. I think uh, that's certainly been a part of it but there's, it's been quite important to monitor it all the way through and, and monitor it after grazing and and uh, we've been pro quite proactive in, in, in dealing with it as we go and I think that's been a very important finding. When transitioning between crops and pastures Brian says it's important to get the germination right at planting and treat the sown pasture as you would a typical cropping paddock. This should boost soil water infiltration and plant density, stimulate a weed germination and provide early feed for livestock. The stock feed has certainly been an issue for us between that time of uh, end of seeding and, and lambing, which is early July. Uh, and this has been a great trial for us because we have, we've been able to generate a fair bit of feed earlier on and it certainly helped with the, um, that uh, lull in, in stock feed at, at that time. Brian says his preferred grazing strategy is to defer as much as possible onto planned wheat paddocks, sow canola, oats and barley as quickly as possible and then slow right down to finish the wheat. This spreads out wheat sowing dates and allows pastures to get away. It's certainly important for us for that, to be mindful of that time at the break of season to ensure we use uh, systems such as deferment, um, crop grazing um, as such to, to really make sure that we set our system up ready for the, uh, for the lambing period not long afterwards. Brian says that cropping paddocks that have a weed build up are pulled out of the rotation for several years of pasture. Rather than letting them regenerate on their own, they are sown with clovers, grasses or oats to maintain high overall stock carrying capacity. The pasture can be certainly put to better use by that being mindful of that to transition from cropping to pasture and, from, and vice versa. This year the Grain and Graze 3 trial on the Kilpatrick's property will remain in pasture to set up for a short term cropping program in 2016 where it is hoped there will be yield benefits from the pasture phase improvements. Perry Dolling from DAFWA will continue to measure the effect of amount and timing of nitrogen, pasture growth rates, dry matter production per millimetre of rain and number of grazing days. And Muchas Gracias group members have a closed blog allowing them to monitor and discuss trial results, observations and photos.